Let's go to the Shadow Realm together. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we're going dark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, today's topic is panic. Yeah. Um, and it's about stress. It's about panic. Uh, if you are a person who is prone to that kind of stuff, I recommend you listen with care mm-hmm. uh, and take care of yourself. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I certainly am. Mm-hmm. Uh, icebreaker. What is currently stressing you the fuck out? What is causing you to panic? Like, bare bones honesty here. Yeah, so, like any, uh, and as you agreed with me in the the pre-show, like anything that really causes stress, it's usually that low-lying thing that's in the background. Mm -hmm. Like, there are a lot of things that will spike during the day. But there's that low-level thing that's running in the background. For me, that is currently finances. Um, so recently, I've had to put a lot of money into the car. You know, between uh, I paid for insurance for the year. I had to drop a bunch of money to do a repair to the suspension. Uh, I had to renew the ownership. I did an e-test on it. I had to mm-hmm. um, change out the tires for the season, which I know is not a lot. But you couple it all together. Plus, then when they changed out my tires and did the repairs, they're like, oh, by the way, your rear suspension is a little tricky. So it's like, mm, that's more money. Um, we're going to Scotland uh, as of recording in a little over a month. Yep. Um, and with my job at the college, I go through a forced uh, layoff period. Just there's no work to be done. So they lay me off basically from the middle of July until the middle of August. Um, and so I will be unpaid from the college during that time, but I still have loan payments to make during that time. And full disclosure, I pay $710 a month in loan payments between OSAP and the bank. Um, so. With me being laid off, with me going on a trip, which I'm not taking any debt out on. It's money that I've set aside and budgeted for. Um, And with the car payments, my savings account has dwindled quite a bit. And it's getting low enough that it's starting to just trigger that early warning that Mm -hmm. I am one, maybe two emergencies away from not having any cushion anymore. Um, So it's... I haven't quite lost sleep over it, but it's something that when I start to think about it, it's like, damn, what am I going to do? I I, I just need to make it to the end of August when I'm back at the college making my pay. uh, And then everything will be fine because I won't be saving for a trip and, you know, but it's, I have to make it between here and there. So that's, that's kind of what's stressing me out at present. Jim, what's stressing you out at present? Um, so it's an interesting question, and I I thought about it in terms of, like, um, what, you know, sort of what makes me panic, and what stresses me out, uh, and the answer is, uh, nothing. I mean, lots of things are stressors in my life, um, you know, I spend a lot of time at work, uh, I do a lot of stuff on the side, I have people that rely on me, I'm on committees and things like that, and that is all a lot to do. And I, you know, sort of consistently worry about doing that diligently and appropriately um, and making sure that I'm, like, respecting the actual obligations that I have there. But um, the thing that stresses me out is none of that. Um, That is how I manage stress. Uh, The thing that stresses me out is everything outside of that. It It is, like... It is nothing at all and is the absence of things that is the greatest stressor in my life. And I know that sounds super weird, but I also know there are people listening to this podcast who are just like, "Uh uh-huh, yup. Like, where it's not anything, and yet you are consistently on edge. Um, and it isn't any one thing or any couple of things. It is, you know, it, it is the absence of, some, of, of, of other things or the feeling of that absence, whatever that happens to be. And, it, it, and you can't even pin it down. That is what stresses me out. I feel like in listening to your answer there, 
uh, we can make a meaningful distinction between pressure and stress. Mm -hmm. Like pressure is a force being exerted on you, but stress is the thing that's like actually wearing you down yeah. in some sense. Yeah. And so. I, like I, I have lots of pressure, but, um, the thing that stresses me out is, is not the pressure. The thing that stresses me out is, um, like just that I get run down. And I, I will happily run myself down regardless of how much pressure I have. Mm -hmm. So, what is panic? Like, what do we mean when we say panic? It's, it's, a, it's a word that unpacks into a lot of things. And I would dare say has a meaning for pretty much anybody that, mm -hmm. that, is, that is distinct and probably valid. The only, the only sort of bits of panic that I would sort of parcel off as not being meaningful um, in terms of people defining it is uh, people who, who are like super aggressive or whatnot, who define panic as like irresponsibility or weakness or mm -hmm. lack of character or things like that. Those seem like invalid definitions, especially when you consider that, you know, places like the Marine Corps have like very carefully orchestrated panic management techniques that they they have institutionalized mm -hmm. like if that's if that's not hardcore enough for you i'm sorry <laughs> yeah so when you talk about panic what do you mean i mean as a first aider as a right so um i guess we we came up with this a little bit in the pre-show there's kind of the pejorative panic and then um i guess what we'll call panic proper until in the, during the course of filming this podcast, we come up with a better name. Sure. Um, so the pejorative panic is probably that surface one that we think of when we think of panic. And you gave the example of, um, this is not a time of panic. This is the perfect time to panic, right? That is, um, and, or even when you first suggested panic, I snapped a picture of myself and sent it to you of, like that, like the face of panic, which is, um, some combination of fear, shock, horror, mm -hmm. disgust. So there's, I, I'm going to call that the pejorative sense of panic. Um, and here's a metaphor. Uh, if you're a lifeguarder or if you've ever been around pools and stuff, um, pejorative panic and then panic proper would be analogous to, um, what we think of as drowning and what is really drowning. Okay. Um, so what we tend to typically think of as drowning is flailing of the arms, a lot of splashing, screaming, and whatever. But if you've ever taken lessons in terms of uh, lifeguarding, or if you've ever um, seen some of the PSAs, they tell you that a lot of times drowning doesn't look like that. And sometimes it doesn't even look like anything. Um, it's very quiet, um, very unassuming. It doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself. And I think that that kind of distinction that when we think of panic we usually think of this kind of overreaction or mm -hmm. or outward manifestation um as as being the the one kind of panic or the only kind of panic and i think the only reason why we think that is because it's the one that's salient mm -hmm. um but panic proper it's i think it doesn't often manifest itself a lot outwardly or physically um, and so from a, say, first aid point of view or physiological, you would talk about, you know, perhaps increased heart rate. Um, you probably won't get a lot of vasodilation. You won't get a lot of flushing of the face, per se. I think, if anything, you'll have the, the shock of draining color from the face, mm -hmm. cold, clammy, um, the knot in your stomach. It's, I think it's a little bit more... Um, le less outwardly facing, present, uh, presenting, and more of... Um, an intersubjective, you know, feeling that you yeah. know, panic is a, is a state of feeling more so than an outward representation. Um, and I guess the only last thoughts I would give in terms of this kind of armchair psychology, um, going back to um, the Marine example, I'm reading a book called Left of Bang, which they talk... Link in the show notes. Well, we'll throw a link in the show notes. And in uh, Left of Bang, they talk a little bit about these kind of human responses to events uh and so th when the marines categorize uh these kind of stressors on a person or panic it's in terms of uh kind of a sympathetic nervous system heightened response uh which would be condition yellow they would call like you are on alert but you're not yet um stressed 
condition red tends to be more of um, the panic in terms of completely reactionary, uh, completely tunnel vision. And then there's the condition black, which would be closer to this kind of panic proper of a little bit more of a shutdown of, of the person. Um, and so let's think about it in terms of sympathetic nervous system. You have the fight response. So in, in response to some external stimuli, you go into a fight mode. You're um, active. You're ready to, to be combative. The other side of it would be the flight response, the desire to run away, to withdraw, to protect yourself. And then that third non-excluded middle, the panic proper is this kind of shutting down. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say catatonic, but it's definitely quiet. It's overwhelmed, overloaded, overstimulated, not really necessarily responding outward. Um, I am saying all of this as a person who has never really been in that third spot. I have been in fight mode. Um, I have certainly felt the draw of flight. Although, Ryan Huckle enters fight mode. Yeah, well, I mean, I work at a bar as a security guard. My, I am paid to respond to situations more in fight mode than flight mode. Fair. Um, I'm not supposed to run away from, from things like that. Um, but I can fairly confidently say, at least in my adult life, I, I'm very, very, very hard-pressed to think of any circumstances where I have fallen into that third category, where I have been so overwhelmed by something external to myself that I begin to pull back or withdraw or, mm -hmm. or shut down in any kind of way. So this podcast, full disclosure, is going to be a, quite a bit outside of my scope of experience and I need to work very hard to not overstep that limitation so when I talk about panic I'm talking about panic attacks mm -hmm. so I've been having panic attacks since I was about 8 uh, and I'm 33 so I have a lot of experience with varying degrees of panic attacks at least as they apply to me mm -hmm. um, you know and it's, and it's pretty steady it's like once or twice a week kind of thing uh, to varying degrees but, and what I what I mean when I when I talk about panic is is partly that is is partly that sort of sense of being overwhelmed, but often not by anything in, you know specific. Like there are definite physiological pieces that I can put together, but for me, a lot of it is about uh, losing control and retaining control. Uh, so symptoms of panic. Uh, for you, you, you described, you know, physical, physiological symptoms. You described, you know, the, the sort of the spot between flight and flight, uh, and that sort of uh, shut down. And I have definitely had those attacks where, like, you can feel your, like, I can feel my my extremity shutting down. And you're going into shock. Those are the ones that are like, that are bad. Those are the ones where you're like, I, you have to be like, I need to get help because you can die from that shit. <laughs> Um, you know, because your body's just like, oh, we're under a lot of stress. We need to conserve resources. That's that is how people die. Uh, that is how people get you know seriously injured. Uh, for me, a lot of it is more about managing my behavior. It becomes really hard to manage my behavior. It becomes really hard to do anything because I have to spend a lot more effort, not just screaming all the time and that is occasionally challenging mm -hmm. uh, so I mean the symptoms for me are usually things like uh, you know disassociation uh, isolation to remove myself from stimuli a lot, it's, I mean it's a lot of the same symptoms you get in things like burnout where you you know you understand that you need to do the thing but you cannot do the thing and, you know, I sort of fold in until I'm in a position to just, like, eat popcorn, lay on my bed, and watch streams and cry. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I don't want to say it's manageable, because it is. It's one of those things that, like, I know other people who uh, have panic attacks to incredibly different uh, degrees of severity and frequency mm -hmm. 
and I know that it is different for everybody. Like, it is one of those things where it is easy to say that it is manageable, but when you say it is manageable, what you mean is it is manageable for me. Mm-hmm. And in these situations. Um, because it's it's one of those things, because it, the stressors are different for everybody. Mm-hmm. The severity is different for everybody. The consequences are different for everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is one of those those things is like, what if it happens at work? What if it happens in the middle of a particularly tense, you know, family situation? Like, there's a lot of um, things that can go wrong that create additional opportunities to uh, terrorize yourself or become terrorized. So, I mean, symptoms vary, but uh, my understanding is it, it does. It, it tends to be... Um, isolation and um, shame if that makes sense Mm -hmm. Uh, it's something I I think we're going to touch on a little later but um, I think shame is all like like, especially because of the the, the sort of culture we have um, shame is a big part of panic so anyway managing panic yeah um so, you, I mean, as a first aider, you've experienced, like, helping people manage shock and things like that. Mm-hmm. And when working security, you have experience in, in sort of helping manage those kinds of situations, it mm-hmm. seems like. And, and I mean, while while you, you joke about, like, entering fight mode, mm-hmm. my understanding is that most of your, your training and responsibilities focus on de-escalation yep. rather than, you know, hauling people out physically. Yeah. Yeah, when... I guess the best way, the best place to start with managing panic or anything like that is you have to, you have to start to pick up on the signs ahead of time. You have to recognize it. Um, the earlier you can recognize it, the better, because then, ideally, the the further out you can get ahead of it, the better you can hopefully manage it. Now, I'm not saying forewarning is is going to manage it, mm-hmm. but. The, the faster you can recognize those signs and symptoms, the quicker you can respond to it. Um, and so, I, like, there's, I have, uh, in this case, the classic two response. Like, I have at the bar, and then I have for me personally. Um, so, at the bar, um, and again, this is something talked about in Left of Bang, it's all about um, having enough experience to establish a baseline of what's normal. Uh, normal. I mean, chainsaw's normal is different from a club's normal, right? So our clients are different. So I have an established baseline of what other people's behavior is supposed to be, and then I judge situations based on deviations up or down from that baseline. Um, I mean, I work on door, so my baseline tends to be more um, seeing hostile people coming into the bar, uh, people who are too intoxicated to come into the bar, or people actively deceiving me trying to get into the bar. Yep. That's much different than people inside dancing a lot. There's a lot more human interaction going on inside than there is outside. Uh, but the big thing is, is you have to establish that baseline. You have to learn um, what's typical or what you're going to see and things that deviate from that. And then once you start to see those things that are deviate, you can focus in on them, um, determine whether or not they really are uh, things to be concerned about or just anomalies you know every individual is different some people uh, behave differently but it might not be something that you need to to get ahead of um, and then for me personally um, I typically the closest I come to panic uh, and the reason why I bring in that drowning example from earlier is uh, the closest I come to panic is when I start to feel that overwhelmed sense um, that I've bitten off more than I can chew, that I've overcommitted myself to too many obligations. Um, You know, I got this when I was trying to figure out how to pay for school, how to do well in school, how to, Mm -hmm. I should find a job, um, you know, any kind of personal feelings, you know, if I'm going through anything that's, you know, perhaps a little bit of depression uh, or anything like that. um, Usually my panic manifests itself at two o'clock in the morning when I've procrastinated for a long time and now I'm suddenly realizing how much I've screwed myself over and I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. Um, 
at one point in school, I would just stay up as late as I possibly could to, to power through it. Um, but since then, I've realized that that is probably not the best use of my time, and it's not the most healthy way for me to respond to, to those situations. Um, and I know you had commented that this, like, this is so adorable when I'm describing it, but what works for me mm-hmm. is <clears throat> to give myself permission to be like, okay, there is nothing that you can do right now that can't be put off until later. You, you just go to bed. Um, a, you'll feel better after sleep. So you'll be in a better state of mind. Um, you will feel better when the sun comes up tomorrow. For, for some reason, it's really strange, but that, that the sun coming up helps me to feel better. Have you ever considered that you might be a Warp Earth vampire? I, I could be a daywalker. I don't know. Um, I've, I have been described as a daywalker. Um, I have seen you walk in the day. <laughs> so uh, I find that, that the brand new day helps establish a sense of optimism. The end of the day makes me feel like I've wasted the day. The start of the day fills me with a sense of optimism that I have the entire day in front of me. Um, and I also know that when it when I wake up, it's time to take stock of where I am, like poke my head up out of the proverbial trenches, take stock of what I where I am, what I have, and create a plan moving forward. And I often find that once I, I stop and reflect and create that plan, that it's I'm, I usually find that okay, things aren't nearly as bad. Uh, I can manage this, or I know where I need to, to seek out help. I know yep. if I need to send out those emails and say like, Hey, can you please give me some extra time on this? Or can you handle this load for me? I cannot do that. Um, it allows me to prioritize things. Okay. I'm going to work on this first. I'm going to get this out of the way. Then I'm going to work on that. Um, so I find that kind of planning and whatnot helps me out. Um, and those are usually, that's usually enough for me to, to manage through it. But again, like that's, that's a fairly mild set of uh, steps and that's a fairly mild um, uh, subjective experience to go through and that's not something that is available to to everybody so yeah so for me i mean the big thing for me is man is is the the sort of i i spend like a medium amount of effort all the time managing my behavior and when I am having an attack. Like, the amount of effort that takes spikes dramatically. So, like, I wind up, you know, I do things to isolate myself. I I sort of try and get myself in a position where I can just, like, write it out, basically. Um, Because there isn't anything that's going to make it stop, typically. So you just got to sort of weather the storm. But sleeping helps. I mean, shockingly, well-rested people, I think, are less likely to have that, but it's not a guarantee. And the big problem is that often that's what makes it hard or impossible to get sleep or to get meaningful rest. Mm -hmm. But I will do things like I will count stuff. I will like I will start becoming very particular and very detail-oriented because focusing on those details helps me uh, deal. It helps me manage um, because then I'm focused on that rather than focusing on whatever it is that's, the, the, that is actively assaulting my my brain. Uh, I have fetishes, not like the the sexual kind, but I was really hoping for a spit take there. No, I am not going to ruin <laughs> our equipment. Fair, fair, um, but no, I have objects, you know, that remind me of important stuff or that help me like get my head into places where it is calmer whether that's music whether that's objects in my room um i've talked a bunch about you know when i when in the course of talking about depression i've talked about my macaroni and cheese which is actually on the shelf sitting right behind me um and we'll link to that video in the show notes because i'm not going to redo it here but it is those kinds of things that help me ride it out but that's at home i mean the big the big thing about panic attacks is they can happen anywhere and more often than not probably they happen outside of places where you are safe they happen when you i mean shockingly they happen when you're vulnerable and you know at work or you know out out and about or you know and outside of regular support structures it can be really hard 
Um, I have definitely had panic attacks at work. Um, and I am fortunate that, like, because I will get, I will immediately get super surly. And I'm fortunate that I work with some people who um, are pretty attentive to that. And, like, they will see me immediately begin, like, retasking myself on stuff that I think I can do. Uh, when, you know, while that's going on. Because, I mean, I don't I don't want to become incapable of doing my job. I very much like my job. And I want to do it well. But there's also a point where I'm like, I, there are parts of it that I will not be able to do well while I am, you know, spending that much effort. Not, like, just weeping constantly. And that is a problem. <laughs> But yeah, I have a really supportive team, and they're really they're 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 sort of whether they know it or not, because uh, I'm not I've never talked with them about it. But whether they know it or not, they're they seem to be particularly mindful of it, and we have a dynamic where I can shift to things that I can manage, uh, and they will shift in response. So they're not picking up extra work. I'm just picking up a different kind of work. But if I didn't have that kind of team, and I, and I have definitely worked in places where I didn't have that kind of team, where you just, like, you just wind up in a space where you're like, I am going to feel and be awful for the next six hours. And I am in this place where there is no support. Shit. And that's when I started developing, you know, habits like, man management habits like counting, that's where I started developing and carrying fetishes and things like that is I'm like I'm going to be outside of places where I have support I need every tool I can get and sometimes it's not enough but every tool you can get um, I find that with uh, like now that you know everyone has a smartphone it is easier to reach out to people and that is one of the things that you wanted to talk about was was sort of how to when you are not a person who who has those kinds of, of attacks is how to support somebody because I mean yelling don't panic over and over again doesn't really do much yeah or calm down oh everyone loves being told to calm down calm anytime down. someone seems remotely aggravated um, just repeatedly tell them to calm down in a progressively louder and more aggressive tone. It will 100% resolve that situation. It will not. Don't do that ever. Yeah. It's No one likes being told to calm down. Yeah, the only time I've ever used it is if I'm deliberately trying to stoke the fires at the bar. Yeah, like if you're if you're yeah. trying to piss somebody off, yeah. that is 100% the way to do it. Yeah. Um, but no, and, and supporting somebody in that kind of situation can be really tough. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because I think everybody is different. Everybody handles it differently. Everybody de develops their own ways um, of managing. And sometimes that's going to involve reaching out to people. Sometimes it's going to involve needing to be alone. And it can be really difficult to communicate. I mean, not in the least because like, they're immediately having this kind of attack. But also, and I, I mentioned shame earlier, uh, panic attacks are shameful. Like... We are in a culture um, where, like, panic and fear and the sort of loss of control that comes along with that is regarded as weakness. And it is regarded as, as shameful. That, you know, you, you, when you are like that, when I am like that, we, we become a burden to others. And we should not... Even if they are willing to provide support, we should not impose upon them in that way. Mm -hmm. It is a thing to apologize for, and like that can be a really hard. I I have not in any way mastered getting past that. Mm -hmm. Like I have mastered it sufficiently that I am capable of discussing it on a podcast. Mm -hmm. But um, if you are watching you have seen me repeatedly fiddle with the fetish around my neck 
uh, which is my Surly Amy semicolon necklace, um, throughout this entire show. But like it, it is a thing where supporting people mean means different things, but ultimately it means being mindful of them and their needs and listening to them when they articulate what they need. You know, it might be a hug. It might definitely 100% not be a hug. It might be water or a blanket. Um, or solitude. Yeah. Yeah. Like it might, it might be go the fuck away. Yeah. And I guess the, the important thing as a bystander to it is whatever happens, it's not personal. I guess unless unless you are the cause of it, but um, for the most part, anything that happens, it's a it's a thing that's happening, but don't take it personally. You know, they're not trying to be insulting. That's not like it is what it is. You know, your best response is like, I'm gonna be over here if you need me. But like, you know, I'm not like, hey, do you need you need help? Like, what what do you what do you need? Like, just tell me what you need. Maybe it's mm-hmm. time to just. Take a step back and evaluate the situation as, as it needs to be. Like, don't smother, don't isolate unless that's what they want. It's as, as you said. There's no there's no one size fits all thing that works. Just read the situation, read the room, and, and try to roll with it. So the the thing that I have come to understand. Um, in, in spending time with other people who have panic attacks and dealing with myself is the best thing you can do is when they are clear of it, you know, like maybe a couple of days later or whatever, ask them, you know, and again, if they are comfortable with talking about it, um, you know, what is, what can I do? How, what is the best way that I can support you when that is happening? Um, because it all, it, like, it, it's going to depend on all kinds of stuff. It's going to depend on who you are to them. It is going to depend on where they are mm-hmm. a, a lot of the time. You know, if, if what helps me is cookies and hugs, but I'm at the office, we can't, can't really do that. Um, but I might be able to, you know, step out for a bit. Mm-hmm. And so there, there's, you know, the worst time to ask somebody about it is while they are actually in the middle of it, because it just puts more pressure on us, and that isn't something that anybody's looking for. Like, although it is the immediate instinct to do, you're like, "How can I help?" Mm-hmm. Um, it isn't always the constructive thing to do. Mm-hmm. But and then once you know, it's a matter of listening and being mindful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, panicking. It fucking sucks. Like, the 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 closer for this one is just, if you experience this, understand that I see you, and that, I mean, I at least in some part get it. And if you know people who experience this, uh, you can probably answer that question better than I can. Sorry, what was the specific question? <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here like I'm like I, setting you up for like how, how do you support people and and you're just like what it's like it's um, I honestly like uh, I'm not even sure how to how to answer that as a as a person who's never experienced it um, I guess keep an open mind and respond to um, what they what they ask for what they need kind of deal um, don't don't have preconceived notions. Um, and don't certainly don't smother. <laughs> I don't have a pithy, wonderful way to 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 summarize. Oh. Also, an afterthought that isn't a real afterthought. Don't out them. Oh yeah. Don't you know? I mean, some people are comfortable talking about it. Some people aren't. You don't know who those people are until you actually have that conversation with them, and it, or until they ha- they choose to have that conversation with you. But outing people for that kind of thing especially in a culture where it is it is shameful is not helpful if you want to talk with somebody about their panic attacks 
um, or about their states of panic. It is best to do that in a, in a situation where they feel safe, where they are safe, and in a way that is completely at their discretion. Not, you know, at a party with 20 people or whatever. That is not a good time. <laughs> so, like, it is, it is, you know, no one else needs to know except the people they tell. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a heavy episode. We haven't done a heavy episode in a while, so we were... We were about to. We were about to do. So. Anyway, um, I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome, friends. Stay awesome. I understand that it's like a real Yu-Gi-Oh thing, but I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh. I just like that notion that when you're going to something that is both super dark and goes to 11, you're going to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> It's just that notion that, like, when you look across the table at somebody, regardless of context, and you're like, oh, you just want to take this to the Shadow Realm. Let's go to the Shadow Realm together. <laughs> They're like, what?